What's up, Cal Game? Welcome back to Static. So, let's solve this problem. So, we got the shape here, and we're trying to find the moment of inertia around the x-axis, which is denoted ix. So, let's do that. So, we're going to use the parallel axis theorem, because looking at the shape, we have, you know, not just a normal rectangle or a square or a circle or anything. We have, like, these kind of Lego piece look at things. So, let's go ahead and figure it out. So, first of all, when we have the parallel axis theorem, we'll need to break it up into simple shapes. So there's a couple ways we could break this up. Uh, I think there's probably a whole lot of ways, but the smallest and most simplest way I could find to do it is we're gonna draw a line here and a line here. And then we're gonna have basically three shapes. So we're gonna label this long one shape number one. This one's gonna be shape number two, and this one's gonna be shape number three. So with that, we're gonna go through the parallel axis theorem for each one of these shapes, and we're gonna add them all together. So let's just go ahead and start, and we'll figure it out as we go. So the parallel axis theorem says we're going to add up this for each of the shapes. So we're starting with i bar x prime, which for a rectangle, if you look in the back of the book, you have it for all sorts of different shapes. For a rectangle, it's equal to 1 12 base height cubed. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So 1 12 times the base of this rectangle. So the base of it is 2 inches. And then the height of this rectangle is 6 inches. So we're going to do 6 cubed according to the equation. So the next, we're gonna go ahead and add the area of this rectangle. So the area is gonna be base times height, which we could just say is 12 inches squared because it's two inches wide and six inches tall. And then we're distance y. So distance y is usually the most confusing part um, to people. So distance y is telling us basically, we're, at, we're looking to the distance between center of masses. So the center of mass of this whole shape is gonna lie across the x-axis. So we can label this y bar because that's the center of mass of this whole shape. It lies on the x-axis. Now, y-bar for each of these individual shapes is now what we need to find. So for shape number one, uh, because it's a rectangle and it's symmetrical across the x-axis, it's actually just going to be right there. So this is going to be maybe y-bar one. So y-bar two, not surprisingly, is going to be in the center of the shape, so y-bar two. And then y-bar three is going to be in the center of this shape. So what we're looking at is the distance between this y-bar, the one that goes across the entire shape, to the distance of each of these individual y-bars. So it would be the difference between the y-bar of the whole shape, the center of mass of this big shape, and the center of mass of shape number one is zero inches. So we're actually just gonna put a zero there because it's no distance away. The center of masses are on top of each other in terms of the up and down action. So, we did it for the shape number one. We went through this whole equation. Now we need to add it up to shape number two and three. So for shape number two, uh, we have the base. We're gonna run through this equation again. 112 base. The base is four inches and the height is one inch. So one cubed. Then we're gonna add it to its area. So its area is four inches squared. Then we're gonna multiply it by distance y. So this time it is gonna have a distance y. Uh, the distance that we're looking for is the distance from here to here, and this is distance y. So not too far to tell that distance is gonna be one inch plus half of an inch because this rectangle's center of mass is halfway of its height. We're gonna actually just go ahead and put 1.5 squared there. So now we're gonna do it for our final shape. So last time, 112, its base is four inches. Its height is one inch cubed, because that's just how the equation is. Add it to its area of four squared inches. And this distance is gonna be the same distance as this because it's symmetrical, so we will do another 1.5 inches squared. So now we just need to do the math on this. Plug this into your calculator, and here we get 54.7 inches to the fourth. And there we go, we solved the problem. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, check out my playlist for a bunch more problems on moment of inertia so you can learn with harder examples. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.